So this is the 80 ED. Um, I'm changing the way I'm mounting it on the uh, scope, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to give it a clean as well. Um, tiny bit difficult to see, but there are there's a bit of um, dirt, I guess, and and there's I think maybe a little bit of uh, mold on the inside. So I just thought I'd run through the process of taking it apart. So. Uh, obviously you remove the juice shield, it just pops off. Then uh, there is this retaining ring. What I did, there's these two little holes here. So what you need to do, to, because this is normally snugged up tight, I've obviously loosened it already. Um, you need to get something in each of those holes to kind of twist it. I just use these calipers, gives you a nice little uh, way to pop that sort of hole in there and in there obviously carefully <laughs> you don't want to scratch anything and that's just enough to break the tension off the um, off the uh, threads and then you can just undo this so obviously I've already undone it so this is way easier so there's a lot more that probably turns about 15 20 times also in there uh, there is uh, a little o-ring, little metal spacer, I guess. Um, so what I'm going to do is work on some gloves as well. Just some latex gloves to make sure I don't get oil and stuff over the glass. So. I've got everything sort of nicely, nice soft old t-shirt, uh, and I'll just see here, so that just pops off, a little wiring, a little spacer, and then this is all just loose in here, so what I just do, in fact I'll probably do it this way, just tip it up, just give it a little bit of a jiggle, and that's popped out of there. Now, there are three little marks uh, there. So there's the two, two rings. Now what I've done is grabbed uh, a little marker, Sharpie, and I've made a mark on, on the side barely visible there um, with the front indicated and the two pieces of glass uh, marked so that I know where to line it up. Now I've done that, made those marks in two spots um, so that I can make sure I line it up. So there you go there. So when I've taken it out, so I can make sure I've got it back in the exact same spot um, when I put it back uh, later on. Um, I think there may also be, if there's a factory mark for that as well, no? Doesn't look like it, but um, I just marked two of them so I can't uh, mix up where that is. So, uh, the spaces are on there, so yeah, you can see there is some kind of marks uh, going on here. Um, yeah, you can see, it's not focusing on it, but you can see the, I um, uh, can't get the angle, there you go. Um, you can see those marks through there, uh, so we're going to clean those off, um, and let's see if there's anything on there. Yeah, there's, there's a few little spots in there as well, uh, and obviously on the front uh, we are going to have, have had some exposure to uh, dew and contaminants, so 
we'll give that a clean. So, what are we? Oh, yeah, and on this side, I think you can just see about. Uh, it's a bit tough to see, but there, there is a little spot there which I think may be some mould or something that's grown there. So, all right, so cleaning solution. Uh, I have made my own. Uh, this is very similar. It's to the uh, Bintel fluid. It's uh, uh, Dr. Clay Sherrod uh, has made this formula, which is basically some... Uh, come on, focus. Uh, can't get it in. Uh, some demineralized water. Uh, so distilled water, um, some isopropyl alcohol. Um, the mix is three parts water, one part isopropyl alcohol, and the smallest drop I could possibly manage of uh, dish liquid. Um, so what I'm going to do is just give this a spray. Um, I've got pure cotton balls, so these. It's, uh, it's not wood fiber, it's just pure cotton. Um, so we're gonna use that to uh, give it a clean. Uh, and I also have some just plain tissues, not scented, no lanolin or anything in it, just plain tissues just as a fallback. So I'm gonna give those a clean. Um, see how we go. Okay, for the last step, I'm just going to, uh, because it leaves just the tiniest bit of streaks, I'm just going to use a spray just of pure alcohol. together so see a mark there for our first marker I made the second mark wide so we know that it's not the correct mark there so that one matches The wide one there that matches there. Okay, so we've put the glass back in. Um, so we then put the spacer back. in making sure not to cross thread. It's a little bit easier to do this with gravity on your side. So. Okay, so that is it.